On a clear day, the island of Atauro can be seen from the shoreline of Timor-Leste's capital. It's just a short boat ride from Dili and island locals say they've created an eco-tourism model for the rest of the country. Our dream is maybe one day this place is going to be a um, national park. Civil society groups have been working with Timor-Leste's government to develop a new tourism policy to help replace dwindling oil and gas revenues. But some on this island fear its tranquility could be short-lived. We still want a, a development, but only the small one. We don't want the big one. We don't want casino. We don't want a big hotels. We don't want a big uh, helipad. Documents obtained by the ABC show plans drawn up for the government authority known as Zeems, which oversees the island. They depict several jetties, an airport and 11 helipads spread around the island's coastal areas. But the acting tourism minister says she hasn't heard about the plans. I'm not aware of any, any, any plan of having uh, many helipads, I don't think so. This local man and his wife have just opened their home to tourists. They're also worried about plans for the island. Because if they come to a big hotel, the community here, we won't get an opportunity. They have to come to this island and listen to the people and then listen to the island and then see what we've been done here. Timor needs to be careful about destroying its main product. And so that's its natural beauty. So environmental regulations and standards are, are, are necessary. The government says its tourism strategy is still a work in progress and that community-based tourism is the focus. But tourism organisations say little's been done to improve basic tourism infrastructure over on Ataro or here in Dili. This is a new country. This is a very, very, very young country. How the country moves ahead with its tourism policy will be decided after next weekend's election. Felicity James, ABC News, Timor-Leste.